Welcome, Marlies. What prompted your organization to work with the government? Well, we wanted to work together with the government because we received in the first lockdown in Belgium a lot of phone calls from youth welfare workers and their organizations. And they talked about the difficult situations that the lockdown caused for uh, children and young people in vulnerable situations. This was, of course, our first sign to bring the voice of the youth to the government and talk about the effects of the restrictions and their situations. What was the first step? Uh, the first step was first listen to uh, the children and young people and then uh, spreading opinion pieces to try and engage a big crowd. Our vision is that when the crowd becomes active, the government might start paying attention. So my first tip is therefore to not only focus on policy, but also on a broader audience in society. Were you able to draw the attention of the government? Actually, not quite yet. So after we, uh, we saw that the opinion pieces didn't draw that much attention, the thinking process continued. So we decided to talk with the youth uh, in vulnerable situations themselves and therefore we used uh, in-depth interviews. How were you able to do in-depth interviews during the pandemic? We set up video calls or phone calls with uh, the youth welfare organizations and the youth themselves. And when they didn't have a laptop, we made sure that some member organiza organizations like CRAS or Visa Tui Young provided some at the youths at home. But in our case, it was also possible to go to the home of the youngsters themselves and do the interview in uh, real life. What happened after interviewing the youngsters? We analyzed the interviews and screened for some overlapping topics and in this way we could distinguish the most relevant teams. Based on this input we developed a survey that we distributed online and with this we reached 65 member organizations and their children and young people. After that we published our research into the media which had a big impact. It became clear that the COVID-19 pandemic brought a bigger gap in the already existing inequality and this drew the attention of the government, which led to them asking us to join a task force in the Commission of Youth. How did you go into conversation with the government? The first important thing to know about the government uh, reaching out to you is to build up a network. This can take years of making uh, connections. In collaborations with multiple uh, organ organizations, we were able to reach a lot of children and young people. It were, it were our youth welfare workers who went into contact with the youth themselves. With what question did the government come to you? They came to us with a question to share the perspective of young people in vulnerable situations about their situations in lockdown. We decided to invite some youngsters with us to the task force to bring their story themselves and the impact of COVID-19 and their living situations. Do you have tips to facilitate youth going into conversation with the government? Yes, it's very important to prepare them in this process. My first tip is to give them all the information that is needed and to make sure that they are ready to do this. You tell them, for example, what is, you will uh, be attending, what will be expected from them, what questions will be asked to them. You may even prepare their story and practice with them. The second important thing is to be fully transparent of the consequences because sometimes a story can draw attention and it can be positive reactions but also negative. Therefore it's important to not lay the focus on only one story of one child or young youngster but let different youngsters tell their story and invest time in the aftercare of sharing a pers personal story. To conclude, what were the most important lessons you learned reflecting back on this process? The first important insight is that the pandemic brought attention to the pre-existing structural problems of children and young people in vulnerable situations. The reactions of the government on the results of the research are mostly short-term solutions, but the structural issue stays present. The second thing we saw is the solidarity of the community. People want to help, but don't always know how to, or they are not aware of these issues. 
Therefore, it's important to also communicate with the broader society. The last thing I learned is that the right to participation goes together with protection. It is important to look out for those young people who openly want to share their story in the media or with the government. This must be thought out and they must retain ownership of their own story. Thank you, Marlies, for sharing your expertise.